I cannot tell you how good it is to see the two of you. Having spent quite a bit of time with you a few years ago, mm. we worked together. I was on stage with you, which I'll mm. never forget. It was very, very exciting. But here we are talking about yeah. your 15th album. That's quite an accolade, isn't it? It's, 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 it it is. feels like a long way up, doesn't it? <laughs> it is a long Don't way Don't look up. down. <laughs> exactly. Because it's a long way. <laughs> Did it feel quite a monumental album to put together, knowing the, the past? Because we're calling it Future Past, mm. and I know it acknowledges very much what has been, but it's be looking ahead still very much to what's still to come for the band. I think you've got to be careful not to sort of, not to sort of think about it too much, and literally not to look down, and just see the little bits that are in front of you. I mean, very much, I think, um, I, when we started making the album back in... November 2018 with Errol Alcan, with um, Graham Coxon from Blur playing guitar, um, and then our little sessions with Giorgio Moroder. We were we were just doing we were just managing to just do the bit that was in front of us. It's a bit like driving along at night with the headlights on. You could just see the road in front of you. And then the pandemic happened, and um, we had to we had to step away from it for almost a whole year. And during that year, a lot of things happened and a lot of, and a lot of things seemed to make sense. It was almost as, a, as though the sun came up. And when we went back in to make the album in um, early 2021, um, it was like you could see the landscape around you. You could see where the album was going and everything really fell into place at that time. Was it difficult to regroup again, having had that break? Or did it feel quite natural to sort of get back on that road, as you, as you say, Simon? I think we were all quite eager, actually, to get yeah. back together. Um, you know, we, there was a point where we weren't allowed to leave our homes, as you know, more. And, uh, you know, you couldn't gather in groups of more than three people or whatever mm. it was at the time. So we as can. soon as we were allowed to get back in, I mean, we were ready. We were mm. so ready. And I think we came back with so much energy and so much intent. And uh, we came back with a really objective view of the record. It really gave us the time to look at everything, see what needed developing, you know, see what needed binning, and yeah. and I think it made for a, it's made for a really strong record. I think. Mm. Well, um, I want to talk about Invisible only because of the artificial intelligence right. aspect of it. Right. Because you've always been very eager to sort of embrace technology, yeah. and even when the band started. It was at the beginning of that video age, which you completely owned and made right. your own. So is that just another exciting aspect of what you do? Because you're wanting to change and adapt all the time and be fresh, I suppose. We just, we just see something new and we, we, and we run to it, you know, whereas other people might run away from it. Um, in the case of Huxley and Nested Minds, it was our wonderful manager, Wendy, who um, put us in touch with the idea. She said, this is incredible. You've got to see what these guys are doing. It's amazing. Um, to this day, I don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. Um, I know that it's a combination of programs and algorithms that have been designed to mimic the way the human imagination works. But uh, beyond that, I just look at the pictures that you get from it, and I think they're extraordinary. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful, but it's quite horrific as well. It's, it's very strange, very surreal. But it's, it's something new, isn't it? And it is fresh, and I guess that it's, yeah. it's what you need to do all the time. You almost need to reinvent yourselves in terms of the technology that's out there. Yeah, yeah and I, I think we've always tried to push the boundaries. As you say, in the, even in the very early days, you know, video came along, and not a lot of people wanted to do it, really. I mean, it wasn't very rock and roll in 1980 mm. to, to make a video. It was all about the records, and, you know, they, they said it lacked credibility. Uh, but I think we've always been open to anything new, any kind of technology, even when, you know, the, the funk and disco artists were making 12-inch records, we kind of made that part of our world. Uh, so we've always been very open, I think, to, to, to innovation generally. Yeah, and when it works for you once, then you tend to feel better about it the second time round, yes, don't you? Yeah, and then it yeah, works definitely. for you again, and, 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 and it's not, and it ceases to become something that, that is um, intimidating. It's something that you want to have. You really want to have this, this, this well, you want to have this reputation for being, for being at, the, at the leading edge of things. Yeah, of course. And then you've got Anniversary. Um, and talking about videos, it's an totally interesting one. Video. Very totally, totally different, yeah, different. but a very interesting scale. one. Yeah. Yeah. Are they real? Are they? Is it the I real person? Know, they, There's a lot of faces I in think there. I think there was at least one that I think was real, actually. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. Really? I'll have to watch that. it again yeah. with different eyes. I, I, I might be wrong. 
<laughs> we'll have us all guess. I'm... But that's a bit of a milestone track, I suppose, because of, it is 40 years of Duran Duran. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that means a lot. I suppose it's a record you never thought you'd write. Um, it's 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 one we one we never anticipated writing. I mean, when you're in a when you're in when you start up a band, you can't see past the next three months, let alone the next year. To think, you know, you, the idea of will you be around in forty years time is just not a relevant question, <laughs> actually. Um, but you know, suddenly we're here and um, and and we're going strong. We still love music. We get on with each other. Um, we've all got our hair. Um, the, you know, these little things, they, they're, they're all very good. And, um, quite unique, actually. You know, we are quite unique in that, <laughs> and, um, in that sense. <laughs> and, we, yeah, the song, I think John was the one who suggested the, the title of the song. He says, I think we have, should have a song called Anniversary. And, um, and, and I think we picked that, uh, that piece of music. I helped, I helped him pick that music for it, piece of music for it. And um, John and Nick wrote a little bit of the lyric, and I wrote a little bit more. We kind of put it together, and, and we found that we had something really interesting going on that was not just about being in a band for a long time. It was something that anybody who had anything to celebrate, any kind of relationship, a, a family, a marriage, a love affair, a friendship, could, could, we, could, could sort of like feel that that was for them, you know? It works on lots of levels, I suppose, doesn't yeah. it? Um, you talk there just about still loving music, and of course you'd be back on tour and everything else. How does that feel? Does that still give you the same energy and that electric feeling that it did all those years ago? Is it still there, or has it changed over the years? Does it mean something different to you? I think it means even more now, actually. Mm. I think uh, I think you become a musician because you want to touch a lot of dif different people's lives. You want to make a mark. Uh, there's something in us that makes us want to perform in front of people and mm. get some sort of affirmation. And I think that was taken away for all performers yeah. over the last couple of years. Yeah. So to get that back again has been really amazing. I've got to say, and I think the appreciation is even deeper than it was before. And I think also the people that come to shows now, they're, they're, ready, to get, they're ready to get out there and really have a great time. And they'd almost forgotten how special a live performance is. So mm -hmm. we just played a couple of shows in Texas, which were just amazing, yeah. weren't they? I've got to say that the audience yeah. was I mean, incredible. You, know, you, you, you look at these, I mean, America, which has become incredibly fragmented and polarized. And, and, it's, and it's one of the things that's happened during the, the, the pandemic is, that, is that, that people have become more and more polarized and, and a lot of politicians have tried to take advantage of that and make them even more fragmented and further apart and you find that going on stage in front of people is music is one of the things that brings people back together and it's a wonderful thing to be involved with and it and it at this time it actually feels like that we're doing something really important and, and useful not in a big way but in just in getting people back together we're part of getting people back together after this rather dreadful experience we just, we just need to feel Excitement again. Yeah, yeah. It's that feeling of buying the ticket and arriving at the venue mm -hmm. and just you know singing along. Yeah. Things that we all took for granted. I yeah. think now I mean mm. more than anything. And I guess it's a chance for you to reconnect with fans. I know there's a of huge course. buzz yep. about this album and you must feel mm -hmm. that yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, the um the the fans I have to have to mention the fans by the way. I mean they've been extraordinary. They're loyal. Um, they're loyal. They're and they are loyal. Some of them bunch, have definitely. been have been with us for you know four decades. Um, not all of them. Some some have come along later, but they have they've just encouraged us and been there to support us. You know we, um, you know this the just the pre sales on the record alone are enough to 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 give us a really good feeling and a really good leg up when it mm -hmm. comes to the the charts. You know, mm -hmm. um, so we're very very grateful to those people. And I think radio as well. I think radio is still important to us. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, a couple of the songs that we've released have got a, a lot of radio play, mm -hmm. so to hear a record that you've made recently on the radio, it's, it's still a great experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear the, the older songs all the time yeah. on the radio, to, but to actually hear something you've just created, 
is uh, really something special. I think radio would, became really important as well, I think, yeah. in the lockdown. Yeah, it it's was one of those things that almost did like the wartime with people, you know, Very true, sort yeah. of yeah. gathering around Gather the radio around, yeah. to see yeah. what was happening yeah. next. So, yeah. when, when there was that downtime um, alongside trying to put the album together, like, what do music superstars do? What do you do when you're at home nowadays? Like, yeah. what, what is it that you do to relax? Um, but during lockdown, yeah. I mean, I well, we all did things, but... didn't we? We all did things. I mean, I, I... Well, Nick did a lot. Nick did a... Nick, uh... He made an album. Yeah, made yeah. a, made a few made albums, album. I think, in the lockdown. I learned how to make sourdough bread. That's impressive. Like millions and millions sourdough of Sourdough bread and banana bread. It was one I of the other, I didn't make banana it? bread. I didn't do that. <laughs> Uh, it, it, uh, in fact, my, my sourdough bread went down so well at home, they actually asked me, they begged me to stop baking it in the end because everybody was getting so fat. <laughs> um, yeah. And of course, most people bought a dog, didn't they? We bought a dog and I've not had oh, a dog dog's for, so gorgeous. for decades. And oh. so to go back into that experience, you know, that relationship with a, a dog again was quite incredible. You know you're going to miss it when you're on tour. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's the problem now. Oh my this goodness, dog has become me. so humanised yep. that we can't leave the room without Absolutely. him freaking out. So we, we sort our dog out and then we see what the children are doing in yeah, our right, household. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs have much bigger liability than children. They are, they are, but we, we love this dog and it, yeah. she's kind of like a symbol of the of the whole coronavirus thing and, and we'll, you know she went through that with us together so yeah. we really we love her. Luna. Luna? Oh really? Her, yeah. Oh how lovely. How lovely. And what about music? What do you listen to? Like who still inspires you? Who kind of do you really enjoy listening to and get, sort of get well, something from? I He's the expert I've on got, this now. I've got a radio show um, that I started up in, in lockdown <clears throat> and it's become a really important part of my life actually so I spend probably I would say an average of four or five hours a week just checking out new music on Bandcamp, on Spotify and uh, SoundCloud because they're very good they, for, for new acts. And um, there is an incredible amount of great new music out there. I mean, I can give you some names if you like. Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's a, one of the most interesting bands I've come across is an Australian band um, called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I'll say it again. <laughs> King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Sounds like Wizard. a tongue twister, that one. Well, it is a bit. It is and a bit, a, isn't it? And it is, it's in that, in that sort of uniquely Australian way, it's a really stupid name. Um, <laughs> but, it, but the music they make is amazing. It's, they, they've got this um, Middle Eastern tonality that they bring into the music. It's quite extraordinary. If you're going to check out one song by them, it is the song O.N.E. Uh, it, it's they're really worth checking out. What about you, Roger? Any, any bizarre bands from Australia? I, I was really going to say. I, I can't. Um, who have I liked over the last... I loved uh, London Grammar. I think they're mm -hmm. one of the great bands of the last few years. Uh, like the Parcels. Uh -huh. yeah. who I think I like, are also yeah, Australian, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, Jungle, I like Jungle. Jungle. I don't know what's happened to them, actually. They're making new loved, stuff. I Check out Jungle. an act called Wet Leg. Wet Leg. There's two girls from, um, from the Isle of Wight. They've only, I think they've only got two songs at the moment. One's called um, Chase Long, and the other one's called Wet Dream. They're completely um, sort of, they're not really, they're, they're post-Watershed music, shall we say. So, yeah, you don't, don't play them to five-year-olds. I think we were like Billie yeah. Eilish as well. Yeah. We all, we're all a big fan of the, the Bomb theme. Oh, yeah. And people often say, oh, would you like to be making the new Bomb theme or whatever, but... You know, she's done a great job and it, it's perfect for this moment. And I think that the Bond organisation have always made, have done an incredible job. Having of said that, the Barbara. Right thing for the right having, moment. Having but said he's that, going to Barbara. Barbara me now. If you are watching <laughs> and you do want Duran Duran to do the next Bond theme, we're up for okay, it. Yeah, all right. New next Bond, one, next one. new music. It's for, exactly, it's the perfect time to do it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you, of course, performed this about the Global Citizens concert, which I know means yeah. a lot to you and actually in many respects it's a, a huge follow-on from Live Aid all those right. years ago isn't yes, it? Yes it wouldn't yeah. exist without Live Aid. Exactly yeah. exactly and you, you do feel very passionately about its message. I mean the message it's a very general message actually and that is that I mean it's, it's not even about equality it's about ending poverty which really ought to be achievable in a world where men can send you know film stars to them uh, into outer space. If there's that much money around, then there's got to be enough money to feed the people in the world who are on the brink of starvation, and there's a lot of them. Um, but it's, it's a definitely a, a problem that can be addressed. 
and Global Citizen is there when all of us people who kind of subscribe to these different charities and different projects, when we kind of, after two weeks, we kind of forget about them and move on to something else. Global Citizen is there um, in a professional um, status and doing it day in, day out, day in, day out, putting pressure on governments to make things better for the people who need it most. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, can I come along and scream at the side of the yes. stage again? <laughs> you're, yes. you're welcome anytime. Thank very you well. very you much. Well. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.